Hey guys, if you're like me with your TrueNAS installation, then you've got an awful lot of redundancy for your storage pools. However, something that people don't think about very often is the redundancy for their boot pool. The boot pool is really, really important because uh, it contains all of the config and the OS for TrueNAS itself. So if you don't have a boot pool, you basically don't have an installation of TrueNAS. And many, many users just add one SSD to this uh, pool and they call it a day, which means that eventually that drive fails and someday they come in and they're not able to uh, log into TrueNAS itself. So the way we can mitigate against that is to add a mirrored drive to that pool. And that way we've got two drives. So even if one of them fails, uh, the second one will allow us to boot up, see that there's a problem, and then swap out the, the boot drive at a time that's convenient for us. So we're going to do that here. We're going to add a, a mirror drive to our uh, boot drive. So first thing to do is to log into your TrueNAS uh, installation. And then on the left-hand side, what you want to do is select System. Then you've got the option for the boots over here. And you can see the different environments that I've previously had installed, some of the snapshots. But on the right-hand side, we can hit Actions. And then we can take a look at the... Um, the boot pool status. And then we can see here that I've only got one SSD installed on the pool itself. But if we click on the uh, three dots on the right hand side here, we can uh, uh, see that we've got the option to attach. So we're going to click attach. And then we're going to uh, have the option to select which disk we would like to attach to the boot pool. So I'm going to attach another SSD. It's 233 gigabytes in size, which is more than enough for our boot pool. Uh, but it's the only one that I had lying around. So I'm going to just select that there. And then you get an option to use all the disk space. We do want to use all the disk space. Uh, it it asks us, tells us here that this gives control about how much of the new device is used for it. We don't want to use any of the rest of the disk for anything other than the boot drive. It just wears down the boot drive uh, quite a bit faster and uh, puts our uh, redundancy at risk. So we're going to use all the disk space and then we're just going to hit submit here. And then TrueNAS will attach the device. And we can see that the device was attached successfully. We're just going to hit the close button. And then when it reboots here for the boot environment, we can hit actions and then we can take a look at the stats or the settings. Oops, sorry. And we're actually going to hit boot pool status. We can see that both of the drives have been added successfully. So what's going to happen up here is uh, the, the, the boot uh, pool is going to start resilvering. So the resilvering process is just making sure that there is actually redundancy. It's copying data from the existing drive over to the, the, uh, the secondary drive. We don't need to watch that process. We've already uh, added the drive, so we'll get a notification. We've already got a notification that it is uh, resilvering, but we will get a notification again when that's completed. So that's it, guys. That's how you add some redundancy to your boot pool. So at this stage, I'll just ask you to do the YouTube dance again, which, as you know, is to like, comment, subscribe, and to let us know what else you'd like to see on the channel. Um, otherwise, I will catch you guys on the flip side.